because I can hear it through my headphones. Let me know. First band going Son going to Sonya. There's been a lot of Sonya and Illidan bands for the uh, first band phase in China recently. They just don't like dealing with these two heroes. There's the Illidan, slightly. How bad is it? I can ask him to stop, but this is probably going to be for like an hour, so... Yeah, I'll get back to you guys on that one when <laughs> Chet catches up. Thrall first pick for Braveheart. There's the solo laner. Going to be battling against a Cigar or Azul or something from EDG, I would assume. Falstad and ETC have picked up first for ADG, some global presences which are also pretty valuable on this map, allowing to soak for as long as possible before flying to the temples. Uh, who is the better team here? EDG are the better team here. The Chinese polls put them at a 97% chance to win. And Braveheart Super rounding out with the Vala pick and Muradin. Muradin is understandable. He's a really good solo tank right now. Especially with uh, ETC picked up on the other side. He might get banned. Vala, I believe, is a comfort pick for this team. So that's why there's the unusually high prioritization of Vala. We have the Uther ban. Which means EDG are not looking to run the Divine Shield Mosh Pit. Because they would... Uh, have a fairly high likelihood of picking the Uther if Braveheart didn't ban it out, and there's the Xerosul ban from Braveheart Super. Don't think we've seen a Xerosul ban yet. I don't remember one. Here's Sylvana. She's a really solid DPS right now. I'm surprised she wasn't picked up sooner by any of the teams. Like, I might have seen her where the Vala is for Braveheart Super, but really solid. And Rhaegar is one of the top healers in China right now. They really enjoy him, so grabbing him is going to be pretty vital for ADG and also opens up melee, maybe a melee assassin in that last slot. Here's the Tyrande to combo with the Muradin for Braveheart Super. Might see a Tassadar here. Malfurion instead. All right. Daniel J. Newman in chat wanted the Tyrande with Moonfire Mouth, so that's the uh, first pieces of the puzzle. Last pick for EDG, I would imagine it would be some kind of melee. Dahaka, there we go, another global presence. That might mean we're less likely to see a, a stage dive, because we have two globals without the stage dive now for EDG, but Dahaka's super fun to watch. I'm very interested to see if any of Braveheart Super's supports with the Lawnmower again. Opts for a damage heroic. Starfall is probably the most likely thing, but it would be so cool to see Twilight Dream. We've seen it once in Europe so far, in the Leicester regionals, but didn't work out. Oh, just waiting for this game to start loading up and the Chinese audio to deafen me any second now. I'm ready. It's already pretty low. I think Dead Airing is talking about Sylvanas, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm trying to have remembered what they're music button is.
All right, so we've got the healing android on Malfurion, tank android on the tank, Mirrodin. Death, the melee assassin's going to be playing Thrall, Leymon on the Vala, who has not gone the Q build. Must be another Vala player who goes for the Q build, and someone else, was it CR on the Taranda? And I'm totally not going to have enough time to even introduce EDG. You guys saw that, though. You probably know who EDG are. Globals are going to hop straight for the Watchtower and secure that. So Vanus is also going straight to bottom. So EDG can't really team fight right now. They should be disengaging very quickly. We have the auto attack build for Taranda coming out. And yet 2-0 across the board for EDG. Unsurprising, to be honest. So auto attack build from Taranda is pretty neat. Probably going to be going for the Searing Arrows shortly afterwards on 4. Might suggest a start fall, but we're not sure yet. We also have the lightning bond for Rhaegar, which gives him an untalented lightning shield whenever he casts it on an ally, so a little bit extra clear. Yeah, that gank was pretty brutal. And prob those kind of ganks are exactly what Braveheart needs to start fighting against a team that's arguably better than them. They have really good CC timing. They're not overlapping much with the CC at all. They do pay for that with a Muradin, but that's still arguably a slightly favorable trade for Braveheart there, even though the Muradin was the most valuable hero in terms of XP because he was the latest kill. It was still a one for two. The Dahaka has been opting for a variety of talents that the Dahaka players in China, but this one's been going for the more European slash NA style with the move speed on one. Normally you finish that quest up around level 16 to get that full 15% move speed. It's like EDG are going to be focusing on the top shrine, trying to get this thrall kill. They will get a really good drag. Dahaka's kid is just so good. So they'll be securing the top temple Poking lightly, annoying around the uh, mid-temple, but EDG's goal probably shouldn't be this middle temple, but they are going for it. They rotated everyone down. They've got five people here looking for another kill. There's the Malfurion kill. Hey, Deb. So EDG went for the greedy play there, and it paid off for them. Normally, teams are going to be like, respecting the other team and saying, all right, let's just trade one temple for one temple and go from there. But EGG were like, no, we're the better team. We can force you off of the middle temple and just have one and a half worth of temples instead of one temple each. But that does rely on them winning the second team fight here. But so far, death is horrendously out of position and will go down. But the ETC does pay for it with his own life as well. So it's a one for one so far. Looking like both teams want to just chill for a bit. Braveheart are giving this up. Yeah. So that, that definitely goes favorably for EDG there, even though the ETC ended up dying. As long as Falstad gets out of this, I think he's going to die too. Yeah, even though um, EDG are definitely ahead, I think Braveheart are landing their, their CC really well, comboing the stuns and the roots. Mowing my lawn at the same time. Yeah, too right. I hope you guys can't hear that. If it's really bad, let me know. So we have the full hammerang build for Falstad. He's got that extra range that normally indicates that there's a key target in the back line he wants to poke down, as opposed to throwing more hammerangs at the front line. So he's probably looking to throw that hammerang out towards the Vala or maybe the Taranda. Both camps being taken, the siege camps on either side. It looks like EDG did finish theirs up faster and are looking to potentially steal that from Braveheart, but Gemini poked his head in, didn't like what he saw, left promptly thereafter. 
We're going to be looking for teams to consider their night camps on the top of the map very shortly. Looks like Braveheart actually got theirs arguably a little bit soon. Normally you want to cap that as the bottom temple spawns, so it forces the other team into a bad decision. Do you want to fight for the bottom temple and leave the knights pushing, or do you want to clean out the knights and give up the majority of the bottom temple? But Braveheart capped their knight camp so fast that EDG don't have to worry about that anymore. So I think EDG are honestly going to get level 10 before this bottom temple even spawns as long as no one else dies. Good burrow there from Dahaka, but I think he might still struggle to get out here. Oh, the drag. The drag into the mosh pit. Alright, level 10 has been reached, and they overcommitted. That Dahaka play might arguably have been a bait. Because he knew how close level 10 was, and he knew his team was rotating to him. That was... I'd say that's a bait. So we did see uh, the all heroics used, I believe it was Mighty Gust, uh, Adaptation. I'm not sure what the uh, Dahaka one was, to be quite honest. There's been a lot of Adaptation picks. We'll have to see when the cooldown comes off. But it was also Wailing Arrow, Ancestral, and Mosh Pit, so... Standard heroics. Let's just see what Dahaka's is when the cooldown comes off. I think it's Isolation. And EGD are playing this out really well. They're actually ignoring the bottom temple entirely. They're getting as much damage as they can without using the map objective, which means the map objective will target more valuable structures. Further increasing their lead. Braveheart can't do anything to contest this until they get level 10. And EGG are just walking around like they own the place, which, to be quite honest, they do. Any kind of contestion from Braveheart is going to be a risky play until they get level 10. I think this boss is probably going to be free for EDG. It's going to look scary, but Dahaka, who's top lane, can burrow down. There he goes. He is burrowing down. The Mighty Gust is also up, so Balzac can just gust away. There's the boss, and Braveheart still are not level 10. Malfurion is horrendously out of position, and he will get caught out. The drag is not going to come out from Dahaka, so not a second kill. But again, this second temple, which is still sat there down at the bottom of the map, is still being untouched. EDG are going to take that whenever they feel like, all right, our map pressure is no longer significant enough. Like, we can't just walk around and take what we like anymore. It's probably after this boss dies... I imagine they'll rotate down if the game starts evening out a little bit. But this boss could well take keep. And there is the... Uh, both damage heroics are coming out from Braveheart. So they're recognizing they need something crazy to pull them back. There's, here's the flank sundering. It's going to be a flank sundering into a Twilight Dream, ideally. Now it's moving forward. But he only gets the Dahaka. But it was enough, arguably. It looks like the rest of EDG are going to be able to get out of here alive. And that boss is going to take keep. Oh, the owl. That owl. Okay. Well played. ETC does go in for the mosh pit, but I don't know if he has enough damage to actually um, capitalize on the mosh pit. Falsad goes for the uh, risky fly there, because knowing he'll not be able to walk out of there alive. And... Dahaka does show up, he might be able to get the Thrall kill off of that, but this fight went very sloppily, I would say, for both sides. I think Braveheart probably made that about as good as it could have gone, which was still pretty bad. But they are now stuck with Twilight Dream. So they have one heal over time and one small burst heal. Probably to keep up the Vala. Because Thrall and Muradin do have a lot of sustained healing. So. It was a good fight from Braveheart, but they still need level 13 before they can even think about contesting the shrine. And with the amount of globals that EDG have, they can soak for 16 during all of this and come down as soon as Braveheart hit 13 and decide they want to contest. So this is almost like a checkmate scenario for EDG. Braveheart are going to try and contest this without level 13, but they're going to need a miracle, I think. 
There, that's the start of the miracle, though. That's ETC falling pretty much for free, but it looks like Thrall will also go down as a cost of that. Tyrande is going to be next. That's a really good Mighty Gust. Pushing them all into the corner. Dahaka getting a lot of value off of his Dark Swarm. Sylvanas is going to be free to Windrunner her way around, and that's 4 for 1 so far. Muradin will be falling here as well. They might even go for Core here. They have a reasonable amount of time to consider that. Okay, they're going to take the safer option. They're going to at least get like the Well and the Keep here. Thrall will be up in a few seconds, so they will have to contest with a Thrall with Sundering. So, this is definitely a safer option. They can at least weaken this, maybe kill it. They will kill it. Okay, I didn't see the health bar. <laughs> Top of the uh, overlay was covering that. It's all almost snowballed from the fact that EGG had the confidence to take those first two temples right at the beginning of the game. They said, no, we won't trade one for one. We're confident in our team fighting against Braveheart Super, and we'll just push them off their own shrine. And they got a two-level lead straight from that, I believe. And played with the lead really well. It's level lead from EDG, it lets them play so aggressively, they're just stealing away camps. This is a Muradin they just blew up. They just blew up a Muradin with a CC lock. Like, things like that shouldn't happen unless you have a level lead. EDG are playing this really well so far. If I'm in Brave's Heart's position, you're, you're looking for those kind of... Sundering, Interwailing Arrow, like big heroic wombos. Or a boss throw from EDG. Something like that. But Sundering won't be up for another 50 seconds, and Starfall was used there, but EGD didn't even respect that. They just walked right through it. They might be able to take this third keep. There's the drag onto the Malfurion. Follow up Power Slide. Silence to follow up the Power Slide. He will get out with his life. So, good attempt by EDG. Looks like they will be forced away here. I, I wonder if EDG are maybe thinking Thrall Sundering might be back up soon. <coughs> the re-engage from uh, EDG does come out now. The drag was attempted, but did end up missing. He didn't opt for any of the uh, drag talents at level 16 instead for the rapid regeneration, so... Not sure why that is. I think that's probably one of the weakest talents at that tier. They're all quite weak, but the drag talents are normally the ones we see. And he's not exactly going for a tanky Dahaka style. Again, Muradin getting CC locked. That's crazy. Braveheart were doing really well with their comboing of CC towards the start of the game, but it looks like EDG have figured out, hey, we can do this too. <laughs> and we can do it to your Muradin and your Thrall. Tyrande is now the next one who's going to be caught out here. And the power slide flanked into the mosh pit. That's just showing off at this stage, EDG. Come on. All right, GG. Well played. Tyrande's damage numbers were pretty impressive there, 23,000. Like, if she went owls, she might have gotten a bit more. And if she wasn't, like, three levels down. That's a hard game for Braveheart to lose, though. They clearly had a plan going into that. And they were just arguably outplayed from, like, level 5 onwards. The Twilight Dream pick from Alfurion didn't really get much value. There was the one use we saw during the uh, defense or attempted defense of the keep, the bottom keep, but all it hit was a Muradin. Not a Muradin. Dahaka, I believe it was. One of the tanks. It hit one player, and it was one of the tanks, and they did die. But that was it. They're giving the MVP to SK4, who was the Falstad player. I would have given it to one of the tanks, to be quite honest. I think they had some really good stuns and drags towards the later part of the game. But there were also a, a few really good gusts. I mean, it's hard to pick out one player and just say, You are the best for this game. I think everyone 
played pretty well there from EDG. But I think the main thing to highlight from that game from EDG's point of view was how they used the Sylvanas. <laughs> hey Kya. I would let you hop in on this cast fam, but I don't exactly know the overarching rules that China have laid out. I think it's already towing the line that I'm doing it for Gilly and Zoya, so if I could, I would, but I don't think it's me to say who I would have casting with. If it was me, I would say, yeah, sure, hop in, but I don't know. I'm totes down, but is the mic static for just me? You're the first one to say that. Ever, I believe. So, maybe anyone else can confirm or deny. Bakery, you seriously rocket casting. Thank you. Mic static. It's a bit crackly at times. Hmm. Some popping of the mic. This is like literally the first time I've ever heard this since I've had my mic, so... I am unsure what sound you're hearing. I can check it afterwards, but I'm not sure. Like, I have zero idea what that could be. It would be something that changed between Friday and today. Because no one said anything Friday. No one said anything on any streams, so I don't know what it could be. I'm sorry. It's picking up extra. Might want to turn down your game. I mean, there's still the lawnmower outside. That might be it. I have said as a lawnmower. Can't hear the lawnmower. Alright. Uh, there's an NA qualifier, which is part of the reason why I'm casting this, so Gilly and Zoya can sleep for the NA qualifier. I don't know the start time, I know it will be on this channel as well as Jake's and a couple of others. I don't know the start time. I'm assuming 10 a.m. Pacific but I'm not sure the time. 10 a.m. Pacific, all right. Well, yesterday we had Lily, Murky, Hammer, all sorts of stupid picks. Today we've had DPS Malfurion, and that's only game one. I'm ready for game two. Look out for Team Blaze. I will always look out for Team Blaze. Is there a reason why the NA matches are not on Liquipedia? Probably because they haven't been played yet. I think they are. So you're sounding strange. Yep. <clears throat> Second pick will be EDG's pick of Battlefield of Eternity. It's interesting that EDG are getting the map picks here. I think it's the loser of the last one chooses who gets map pick and who gets first pick. But the map pick for EDG makes total sense. Like, if you're a, a better team, 
and you pick Battlefield of Eternity, you normally win pretty quick. Like, if you know how to control the map, get the first two uh, Immortals, you normally can just win even off of the second or third one. First bands coming out, again, we've been seeing a huge amount of Sonya and Illidan bands. Sonya especially so on this map because she has a huge amount of siege damage to go onto those Immortals. And that was who Braveheart banned last time, but they'll be banning the Sylvanas. That's interesting to see. Sylvanas has been first picked a lot on this map because of her strength pushing with the map objectives. Pushing with any kind of monster on these kind of maps with a Sylvanas just increases the value of that map objective so much. Like, all the way back to Haunted Mines, but now people are doing it on this map. Infernal Shrines, Tomb of the Spider Queen, now that Sylvanas has uh, gotten a lot more strength she's picked a lot on these maps, so interesting first ban. It makes a lot of sense. Illidan being banned as well. It's a very common first ban. People just don't want to play against him. It does open up the Sonya for Braveheart if they would like to pick that. Generally for this map you want some kind of a solo laner and then a lot of damage to be put towards those immortals, so Thrall is a good pick. Sonya is a good pick for that as well. Both satisfy both of those roles, so EDG will need someone to combat the Thrall, or someone who could gank the Thrall. See what these first two picks are going to be. Illidan just sucks to play against. Yeah, he's a pain to play against. First pick, Li Ming. It's not something we've been seeing for a while, actually. Normally she's like towards the lower end of the picks after her recent changes, but she still played. But first pick is pretty unique, and there's the Muradin lockdown as well. They just want to secure that tank as fast as possible. I believe that's what they did last game as well, unless I'm mistaken. No, they didn't. They picked the ETC pretty fast, but they still picked their tank before second pans. <clears throat> So this almost forces Braveheart to pick their tank of choice now. Because there's been a lot of second band tanks in the Gold League. I wonder if this last pick will be a, an ETC here before the second bands. There it is, okay. And the Mighty Gust from Falstad the Global is always going to be useful. Solid ranged sustained DPS. Little bit of burst with the uh, boomerang at level 7. <laughs> Portrait, yeah. If we can keep the chat to English so our mods can moderate the chat, that would be super convenient. Uh, Uther being banned out here, again. Looks like EDG just don't want Uther involved at all. And there's the Rhaegar ban, so we are going to be having some less conventional supports from China. I say less conventional. Normally they want to use the user and the Rhaegar a lot. There's the Karazim being picked up for EDG, and the Tassadar. Okay. That's interesting. I know that Zoyas hasn't been impressed with the Karazim play of China, so I'm sure EDG's Karazim is going to be just fine though. I wonder if they're crazy enough to try Iron Fists for that extra siege damage on the Immortals. There's also something EDG are lacking. That last slot will probably need to be something decent. Uh, Sieging the Immortals, like a Grey Mane is still open. Braveheart, come on. Lily, Grey Mane, okay. Well, the Lily will be able to blind the Karazim, I suppose. I'm. China, guys. Artanis, there we go. There's the siege damage they need. 
Artanis also has pretty amazing synergy with Tassadar's shielding. If you can alternate the shields from Artanis' shields, and then when Artanis' shields die, Tassadar gives him a shield, and then the Tassadar shield buys him enough time for the Artanis to get his shield back, and hopefully that's just a never-ending cycle for the uh, EDG team. Lily is the white flag surrender of heroes. Yeah, I could see that. Artanis with his level 1 siege talent is pretty good. Yeah, this is probably Artanis' best map. If you pick um, amateur opponent at 1, you also have the option of increasing that damage with uh, abilities like follow through and triple strike, if that's your kind of thing. Also, in theory, the Chrono Surge at 4 would help out your siege. I suppose they're going to stick Tassadar as the solo laner against the Thrall. He's probably the best option. He was always one of the old school solo laners that you'd stick against a Zagara before Thrall got his scaling change. You'd use Tassadar into the Zagara. Also, what's up with your mic today? I'm not sure. People keep saying something's up with my mic. Like, I can restart the stream or whatnot, but... I haven't changed anything since yesterday, or since when I last streamed, so I don't know. Like, when this series is done, I can restart the stream, I suppose. Sound like it isn't plugged in right? I mean, I can check that stuff, but I'll do it after the stream, or after this series. We'll have like a 20 minute break where I could do that. You trying to forget the ring game sounds? No, I forgot it. This time I forgot it. Lily, man. Also, we have auto attack Falstad picked into a, a map where there are only two lanes worth of minions, so that's a unique pick. We won't be seeing the Iron Fists from Karazine, but we will be seeing the amateur opponents predicted for the Artanis, so that's something. We also have Ether Walker for Li Ming, so that indicates a maybe teleport style of build coming out. EDG are looking for where Braveheart are, but Braveheart are staying pretty safe. They might be looking for a hard gank onto Thrall, actually. Okay, so they're going to leave Artanis as the solo laner against Thrall. That's interesting. Is this the patch in which Greymane's Q hasn't gotten the change yet? Nope, this is the most recent patch. So, Zealot Charge and Greymane's level 7 Q talent. We haven't been seeing the new level 7 Q talent a lot. It's been a lot of the other level 7 talents, depending on the player. MVP Sake likes the uh, Quicksilver Bullets. Some of the other players prefer Wise and Duelist. They've both been working out pretty well. Braveheart are looking for some kind of pick with their ETC, but it looks like that's not going to happen. EDG, on the other hand, are looking for this gank onto death as the Thrall player. Gemini being so patient. Looks like he's giving up. He's going down. Both teams are going to opt to play pretty safely. They know the, the main stun tanks that both teams are missing, so they should be playing relatively safely until the Immortals spawn. Muradin's looking for another gank at the top lane there. Not sure whether he's going to get it now. He's coming back down again. It'll be interesting to see who attacks and who defends first. Normally you just go straight for attacking if you think you have that high siege potential. Which it looks like Braveheart are trying to do here. They have that Grey Main, which is really strong on this map. They have Falstad as well who's reasonable and Thrall who's also really good. But turns out Artanis and Li Ming are going to be just enough damage up there. Combined with the disruption from the remaining EDG players. So... 
EDD getting a slight edge going into this first phase. I wonder if they're just going to opt to race again. Li Ming is going to go put some damage, and it looks like the remaining four players are going to wait. Karazin moving over now as well. Artan is also moving over. I think EDD need to get out of there and just... They have enough of a lead now. I think they can just focus down uh, Bravehearts and Model, and I think they'll win this pretty handily. Yeah. Yeah, now that this map has been developed a, a lot more, um, the initial, like, agreed-on strategy was just race. But sometimes now you see some of the tanks from each team move to disrupt the other... Um, the other team who's trying to race. Johanna is the main one you see, because she can just pop like a four second blind. And most of the siege you see are auto attackers, so. The shields are already gone. This first immortal is normally incredibly weak, so. This is going to maybe get front wall at best. Like, you see Lily's just halving in front of this. She's, she knows she's not even needed here. This, this is only going to get value if one of Braveheart get picked right now. And I don't think that's going to happen. So, well, Leymon is being exceptionally aggressive. And that's the follow-up's done. SK4 is looking for that ETC kill. He is looking for that kill. Oh, Gemini. Are you going to get out, Gemini? There's a shield. Just enough. Tassadar is like the support player who says to the other team, no, your fun is wrong, and just stops you from killing the target you want to kill. That's basically what happened there. <laughs> Standard Tassadar. Alright, so EDG are going to be starting to work on this bottom camp really fast. Gives them the option of potentially rotating uh, hard to top lane and stealing that siege camp as well before the uh, next phase. Let's see where these three who are halving are going to go. They may also work on the, the Bruiser camp and just sit there and leave it until the Immortal spawns. Looks like that's what they're going to do. Interestingly, Braveheart haven't at all opted for the, the top camp. Yeah, that Greymane and Falstead kill, I'm not sure those should have happened, really. That's more Braveheart giving EDG the opportunity and EDG taking the opportunity. I think EDG are going to be able to get out of here alive. Should be okay. Yeah. The prescience from... Well, not prescience, but the dimensional shift from Tassadar is going to be enough. The move speed from Karazim's Breath of Heaven. And they can get out of there just fine. And, yep, EDG do find the time to steal that top goat camp as well, so even though they maybe capped the bruiser camp a little bit early, they will have that pressure still in top lane. Death was really um, vulnerable there for a moment, but it looks like Artanis did overcommit to that kill and will fall. Leeming also nearly fell for EDG, so she will have to go and at least tap, and this probably means Braveheart just win the first phase. Yeah, the Muradin player for EDD did opt to go and just try and get some damage. But... Well played there by Braveheart. Making it a series. It's like ETC is looking. Trying to bait. He's coming around for a flank now. Is he going to get it? Yep, there's the Karazim pick. One Radiant Dash. He still has another Radiant Dash, so Karazim should be able to get away here. Greymane, on the other hand, he will be able to get away as well. Lily heals, they're on point, apparently. Fell asleep on the Q button just long enough. Yeah, the Li Ming player took teleport build for this map. I'm not particularly well versed at Li Ming, so... I'm not sure what she would have preferred to take, but... It certainly gives you a lot of power with the resets, that's for sure. Teleport build just gives you another button that does damage, which will reset when you kill someone, so... That's always going to be good, I suppose, to some extent. This Artanis build, by the way, is the... Standard EDG Chinese Artanis. 
bills. You don't normally see it in any other region, but it's actually pretty strong. It gives you a lot of attack speed, a good amount of damage, especially both in teamfights and in teaching the immortals. So, pretty all-purpose. On other maps, sometimes you do see the uh, reactive parry, but this one will be amateur opponent. EDD do have the uh, slight level lead, so they will be able to get 10 first if no one dies, but as I say that, Artanis once again gets stun locked. That's the one problem really with Artanis, is if you can't stand still in the fight and auto attack repeatedly and you get stun locks, your shields won't proc, and then you just get blown up pretty quickly. It looks like EDD are going to use that opportunity to uh, take the second immortal of the game for them. Even though the Artanis died for EDG, Braveheart used up all of their resources blowing up an Artanis that they had to go and tap Wells or Hearth. So that just opened up EDG to clean up their immortal. Yeah, Braveheart arguably overspent their resources killing the Artanis and sacrificed the remaining immortal uh, health bar. It's interesting, I wonder if going back and looking at that replay, you play that out differently. But this does give EDG level 10. They do have 7 sided strike instead of the Divine Palm and Wave of Force. Otherwise, heroics are looking relatively standard for EDG. And Braveheart are now looking to engage away from this immortal in a 5v5. Looking for that Mosh Pit or Sundering. There's the Mosh Pit. Sundering actually knocked Gemini out of the Mosh Pit there. And that was also interrupted, I believe, by the Wave of Force. Gemini does get the stun on the Jug of a Thousand Cups as well, which is why I was kind of surprised they picked Lily. One of the reasons why I was surprised they picked Lily. And the uh, the resets go down. There's the first kill onto Thrall. The second kill will be going onto Greymane. Do we get another stun? There's a really good Force Wall. Looks like the uh, ETC will be able to get out. Nope. Stun from Braveheart or EDG will be enough to maybe secure the kill, but they would have needed a phase prism from Artanis, and he opted not to use it or wasn't in range. So just a two for nothing and a fort only. Looks like Li Ming is going to opt to start the top camp. I think she can solo that with teleport, and if she's going to half afterwards, so proactive uh, camp taking from EGG, once again taking both goat camps. Normally, just like on Sky Temple, if there's an equal amount of things on the map, teams will opt to take one of them and give the other to the other team and say, alright, no one's ahead after this, that's fine, we're going to leave somewhere else, but EGG are just saying no. We'll take both. We're confident enough in our abilities. Or maybe disrespecting Braveheart a little bit. I'm not sure. This Lily pick still confuses me. You think she would opt for some kind of a blinding build? Because that would lower the healing output of Karazim, it would lower Artanis' ability to shield. I'm not sure. I, I have no explanation for this Lily. EGG will get level 13 far before Braveheart, so they will just be able to go and probably straight onto the Immortal and bully Braveheart off of it in one way or another. They can force a 5v5 maybe beforehand, which is, it looks like that's what's, it's not even a 5v5, that was just ETC on his own mosh pitting, getting seven sided striked. I'm not sure what ETC was doing there, and I don't think mosh pitting was the right idea because he only had two teammates who were relatively close, I believe Greymane and Falstaff were both still bottom lane, so the only people who could capitalize on that mosh pit were Thrall and Lily. So even if you're going to die there, I don't think the mosh pit was useful. But this does open up um, EDG to probably get a fully shielded immortal here. Uh, ETC has already respawned, but... Yeah. That mosh pit was certainly not worth... I don't think even EDG can... Oh no, looks like Li Ming will get stunlocked. There was some uh, pings going down onto her, looking like she wanted to be focus fired by someone, but... Yeah, you just 
even EDD are confident enough to fight underneath Braveheart's owner model. They just took a three for nothing. This Lily is running the wrong way. So this will be a four for nothing and a fully shielded immortal. This might even just straight up be game, to be honest. This may be game over. There's no way the keep doesn't die. Like, either you, I think you just push with it as uh, EDG, and they, that's what they will be doing. They will be halving for a couple of their characters. The rest of them are just saying, well, I have a well, that's good enough. I honestly think that may be game. The keep should die. That much is for sure. Thrall is setting up for that miracle sundering. No, he's even he's moving back now. If you're in EGG's shoes right now, I'd be asking myself, like, how do I lose this game? And it looks like everyone's sort of everyone who's vulnerable to a flank sundering is moving as far away from where that flank sundering could theoretically come from, which is that top bush. If Thrall is in that bottom bush, then he's so overexposed that he can just be turned on. So the only way they can flank is from that top bush, and Artanis is going to go check that. So There's the Sundering, which actually misses everyone. Like it may have hit the Artanis, but Artanis is still alive. Artanis holds. For now. <laughs> and Braveheart are trying to take the fight away from the Immortal. They know the keep's dead regardless. And that's actually a pretty decent marsh pit, I suppose, given the situation. I mean, it was still horrendous. I don't know. They still have... The Immortals only just lost its shield, so I think they're still game. That flank sundering, I think, needed to actually hit someone. Maybe I'm asking for too much, but it missed. Alright. That's game. False side is flying somewhere. Oh my god. That was incredibly one-sided. I would have expected that kind of comp from the original Braveheart and not Braveheart S. Maybe Braveheart S going downhill as well. But it's cool to see Artanis working out so well. I hope it's not the skill difference that is making Artanis work so well. The level 1 talent for Li Ming on this map? Yeah. If my mic is still, like, really bad, I'll try and, like, restart it or something. Like, I can check how it's plugged in and reset the stream, but I haven't touched anything since I was last on a mic with anyone, and since I was last casting this, so... Uh, yes, EDG destroyed this series. Was not even close. <laughs>